Uh, let me begin a recap of a few expressions that we dealt with earlier. Uh, Endpoint Green's function uh, is given by the following expression. in terms of the generating functional. And uh, where the WJ, the generating functional WJ, it has the form W tilde J divided by W tilde zero where W tilde J is given by sum over V greater than or equal to zero, one over factorial V minus I over H bar. The potential uh, V of phi with phi replaced by derivative with respect to the source to the power V sum over p greater than or equal to zero, one over factorial p times half ij delta over i times ij. Schematically, I'm writing it. Um, and then this potential v of phi is given by lambda three by factorial three phi cube plus lambda four by factorial four, phi to the power four and so on. <clears throat> and uh, we also uh, argued the following results. Wj is equal to exponential of zj and w tilde zero is exponential of z tilde zero, where zj contains all possible connected non-vacuum diagram and z tilde zero contains all possible connected vacuum diagrams. Um, therefore, w tilde and w are uh, uh, will have um, disconnected diagrams. Z is connected. Uh, therefore, when you exponentiate it, you have, so Z is a sum of a bunch of uh, infinite number of connected diagrams. And when you exponentiate it, you have uh, and expand it in powers, then you will have all sorts of products of uh, individual connected pieces. And those are the uh, all possible disconnected diagrams. So those disconnected diagrams will be in W tilde J, WJ and W tilde J. And uh, W tilde zero, J equal to zero is, uh, it will have only the vacuum diagrams. Now, this was, uh, this result was arrived at with, uh, with an argument that crucially relied on, the, on an observation and uh, that was uh, in the free theory about certain symmetry factors in disconnected diagrams. So, and we expect that the same, uh, uh, same uh, fact will be true, will also hold true for interacting theories. So argument crucially relied on the following observation 
in free theory, which we expect expected to hold true also in interacting theories. Uh, the fact that uh, if any specific connected graph appears in a disconnected diagram in n copies, then it must contribute a symmetry factor of one over n factorial. Yeah, this is what we saw in the free theory. In the free theory, there is only one disconnected uh, diagrams. In the interacting theory, there will be infinite number of connected diagrams, but this fact will remain the same, okay? So that uh, if any specific connected graph appears in a disconnected diagram in n copies, then it must contribute a symmetry factor of one over factorial n. Now, given this, our next goal uh, will be to demonstrate uh, everything that we said. See, whatever has been described here is true. We have seen that explicitly in terms of diagram, diagrams and Feynman rules uh, in the case of free theory. The idea is to extend that uh, analysis into an interacting theory, which is much more non-trivial than a free theory because in free theory, we have only one connected diagram. Uh, in an interacting theory, we'll see we'll have infinite number of connected diagrams. But all the other factors like the WJ degenerative functional is given by, can be written in terms of Feynman diagrams and using the Feynman rules, we can get it the mathematical expression. Uh, so here we have this mathematical expression, but for um, individual terms, this is an infinite sum, individual terms, has diagrammatic interpretation and the expression for the individual term can be easily obtained by, by using the Feynman rules applied on those diagrams. And, uh, <clears throat> and this, this particular fact of one over n factorial for disconnected diagrams. So this we plan to demonstrate uh, explicitly in order to get an experience of how to deal with uh, such calculations uh, of Feynman diagrams uh, in, in, a, in a simple theory, say phi cube theory. So demonstration using phi cube theory. So we consider V of phi to be minus g over factorial three phi cube. And we set h bar to one. For the following analysis, we can recover it anytime whenever we want. Um, now, why I take minus g by factorial three phi cube, which means I'm writing lambda three equals, instead of lambda three, I'm writing minus g. This is simply to absorb this minus sign, which can be an annoying factor of minus sign when we do these calculations, okay? So then it becomes plus uh, g by factorial three phi cube. Um, this is uh, one thing. And then, um, now if you do this uh, as we did in a general, con in a general context, we uh, said that, uh, you know, the, um, the Lorentz invariant vacuum will be a constant uh, phi, constant uh, everywhere. And uh, 
that uh, potential calculated for that constant value will characterize from that we can find out the vacuum corresponding to the uh, i mean um, uh, the uh, that will tell you that from where there we can find the expression for the we can identify the vacuum uh, for our canonical quantization so we already did this uh, analysis earlier and uh, we saw that uh, we had defined redefined the potential in such a way that uh, that uh, the constant value of phi equal to zero is the vacuum we are just re looking at the same um, same question same problem or same picture uh, now again <clears throat> so if you plot the total potential the total potential has both the mass terms that is half m square Carly phi square and minus g by factorial three Carly phi cube. This is what we are plotting. Um, so this Carly phi is the constant value uh, of phi, and the uh, the the solution to equation of motion will be uh, will be the minimum or the maximum of of, the, of this potential. So if you plot it against Carly phi, then you get a graph like this. Uh, of course, uh, phi equal to zero, uh, V equals zero, and that is a minimum local minimum. And that's where the, uh, that's our perturbative quant, uh, uh, vacuum for the quantum theory. And uh, now, the problem that we wanted to discuss is basically the fact that this is actually an unbounded potential and we made remarks earlier that uh, in order for the path integral to be uh, well defined and the euclidean path integral the factor the weighting weight factor e to the power minus euclidean action uh, should act as a damping for, uh, for configurations away from the uh, classical solution. So here the classical solution is this point and all these configurations away from it, um, you should have, one should have the action e to the minus is to be damping, therefore the action should increase and therefore action should be a positive definite quantity. Um, that can happen only when uh, potential is, a, uh, is, is bounded from below, but here the potential is not bounded from below. Uh, that we can see easily here in this graph. As phi goes to plus infinity, uh, the potential becomes. So uh, therefore, if you do the path integral calculation, you are supposed to see, if you could do the calculation, then you should see that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't converge or it, it, is, it is not well defined uh, because of the divergence. Uh, so it's coming from uh, configurations, which are when you take configurations far away, and then it is increased, it, it, this potential decreases and uh, <clears throat> e to the minus is increases and those contributions are uh, large. And if you take that into account, then the path, path, path integral does not converge. However, um, the, so, so that is a problem with the path integral, but that is associated to, there is a physical interpretation here. The physical interpretation is the following that um, if you took the uh, so suppose we take the classical mechanical problem it's actually uh, we have brought down it brought it down to the mechanical problem a constant phi is like a single degree of freedom uh, so mm, if you take the mechanical problem classical mechanically classic if you look, the, look at the classical mechanical problem the particle sitting at the bottom actually does not know about the existence of uh, this unboundedness of the potential and a small disturbance from that uh, uh, configuration will lead to a periodic motion. So no problem classically. If you but if you go if you look at the quantum mechanical theory, then of course there will be zero point energy uh, and uh, various states. And since this potential has uh, uh, is the harmonic oscillator potential, but corrected by this term, and therefore uh, energy levels will be corrected harmonic oscillator energy states. 
<coughs> However, those energy states cannot be stable because of the quantum mechanical tunneling to this side. Uh, therefore, if you start out with a particle here, uh, then its, uh, it's probability, uh, probability of finding the particle will not be preserved. Um, uh, and if you, if you choose any, uh, any distance here, any uh, you know, line segment, uh, and calculate the probability of finding the particle here, uh, it, will, it will decrease because of the tunneling, because the particle tunnels in this way. So probability restricted to uh, 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 on this is not, is not preserved. Uh, that's what tunneling means. And uh, the path integral uh, and the, for the field theory, uh, the corresponding statements are that uh, since your uh, perturbative vacuum, interacting the theory, uh, theory vacuum corresponds to this configuration. And then if you look at the, um, look at, uh, you know, uh, small fluctuations, quantum fluctuations, then, uh, they, they, then, the, the, then the calculations at least perturbatively should make sense. Uh, in fact, uh, in the small values of G, uh, you can, uh, for small values of G, if you make an assumption that uh, all the, in any quantity, calculate, if you calculate any quantity that will have a perturbative expansion in power sub G, and if you make the assumption that G is small so that you can truncate it, within that truncated series, you won't see any problem. Um, it's only when you take all higher powers of G and sum the perturbation series, which you tend to see an instability because that has the information of large values of phi away from phi equal to zero. Um, so that is, its, uh, that, is the, that is what is happening. Now we are not, uh, we will not be so much, uh, you know, involved with the physics of it. Rather, we treat this as a toy model to learn the Feynman diagrammatic techniques of, uh, of an interacting theory. That's our goal here, which is why we just look at the perturbation series in this form and, and study the perturbation, studying the perturbation theory means you study some, uh, uh, you start from low value of V and P and go higher, and then, uh, you know, uh, study those terms individually, how to write them down and what is a Feynman diagram representations of those terms, how, how to write the Feynman uh, rules and so on, and understand the symmetry factors. Uh, those exercises are going to be our focus. Uh, instead of asking the question, what happens if we can, if we sum, try to sum the part of series and, and stuff like that. So, so we are writing here that, uh, so perturbative expansion makes sense. Normally, we have quantum mechanical tunneling. That's a non-perturbative phenomenon. And, uh, and we use it as a toy model Okay, with this in mind, uh, let us now look at, uh, let us write down the uh, generating function, W tilde of J for this particular theory we're considering. That will be given by V P greater than or equal to zero, one over factorial V, I G over factorial three, del over i del j cube to the power v one over factorial p 
हाफ आई जे डेल्टा ओवर आई आई जे so there are three in this uh, particular so if you fix v and p then there are three v uh, derivatives so there are three v uh, uh, derivatives with respect to j and uh, here there are p such terms each one having two j factors so two p Uh, factors of j so 3v derivatives are acting on 2p factors of j and and uh, if you so so the resultant number of terms will be 2p p3v so uh, therefore total number of terms will be 2 3v which is 2p factorial by 2p minus 3v factorial now many of these terms will produce identical results and uh, basically the problem is to find out the problem of symmetry factors is uh, is to is to is to figure out this how many times identical results are repeating uh, because those are going to be uh, those are, those will give you the number of repetitions will give you a prefactor to a particular contribution but that prefactor will be divided by uh, by uh, by uh, factors like factorial v factorial 3 factorial p and to this four uh, numerical factors and in the denominators denominators so uh, the any mismatch between these two will remain as an overall factor and that's the symmetry factor and that's how it is appearing so um, that's how that is the origin of the symmetry factors um, so many of these terms uh, produce identical results giving rise to an overall numerical factor and then this will uh, this completes with numerical factors like factorial v factorial 3 etc in the denominator any mismatch will appear as a resultant prefactor and that is the symmetry factor we shall now do certain warm up calculations to see how uh, different terms in w tilde j uh, appear uh, you know can be given in terms of certain feynman diagrams and then from there we gradually start to build up our uh, the principles of finding uh, these diagrams or, or the terms using feynman rules and finding the 
symmetry factors. 